Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you're with us this morning. I'm Julie Moran. Good morning. I'm Olga Villaverde. Today is Earth Day. That's we right. We love that. Over a billion people in 190 <sighs> countries are doing their part to clean up their communities, plant trees, and turn their focus on the unique environmental challenges that we're all facing. What a great thing. It's a global effort to shed light on what must be done to create more sustainable ways of life, and we can all do our part from reducing our personal carbon footprint within our homes to helping change public policy. So it's very important to recognize the importance of going green and let's go green right now. Let's get started. The Balancing Act starts right now. We all want to save energy at home. Not only are we saving on our utility bills, which is very important, we would be helping in the fight against climate change. So what can you do to make your home more energy efficient? With us this morning is Denise Duret from the EPA to put us on track to energy efficiency. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm glad you're here. I, I got to tell you, in my household, it's hilarious. I'll get the bill, the electric bill, uh -huh. and I'll be like, oh my gosh, what happened this month? So then that, what do I do that day? Girls, turn off the lights. Girls, turn off the water. We're walking out of the house. Mm -hmm. Girls, turn off the air. Uh, those things, am I, am I helping? They all help. Oh. It's a typical homeowner response. You know, we start thinking about saving energy at home when we get sticker shock from a utility bill. Mm -hmm. You know, we typically spend about $2,000 a year on utility bills. That's about right, yeah. And half of that goes to heating and cooling your home. So that's a major, you know, major thing to think about. And there are things that you can do to be more energy efficient in those areas. The small things such as turning out lights and keeping that refrigerator door closed. Um, turning off water, those are all important. But then there are also um, other items that you can do. You mentioned turning the thermostat up or down. Mm -hmm. Get a programmable thermostat and take the guesswork out of it for you. And then that way it's pre programmed to, you know, and set to save. Do it on its own. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about Energy Star. You all have a pledge. Can you tell my viewers what it is? We do. We have a pledge to um, be more energy efficient at home and actually help protect our environment um, from climate change. And what that means is going on our site at energystar.gov. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a great new web platform called uh, Energy Savings at Home. You can sign up for My Energy Star account and learn about all different tips that you can do throughout your home to save money on utility bills and help protect the environment. And you can pledge to do those actions and then come back and see what type of job you're doing, how much carbon are you preventing, that sort of thing. I like that. What about Energy Star? What does it mean actually? Energy Star is a trusted symbol for energy efficiency. And when you see that label on a product, mm -hmm. it means that you're getting the most energy efficient product in the market. And so you're going to save money on utility bills and you're also doing a great thing for the environment. And these products are third party tested and certified by EPA approved labs for quality. And let's talk about what we have here today. For example, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you, okay? I go to the store, I need a light bulb, I grab the one that's on sale, bam. I go home. Mm. And yet I know what you're going to tell me is in the long run, I'm probably going to pay more. So help me understand why maybe getting this kind of bulb makes a difference. We always say look for the Energy Star on products when you're buying for your home. Um, you can find the Energy Star label on over 70 product categories for your home. So, you know, it's pretty much out there on everything. And what makes the difference? What makes the difference is that Energy Star can actually help you save more um, money on utility bills and because these products use less energy. So for lighting, for example, Energy Star certified light bulbs use 75 to 90 percent less energy oh. than standard light bulbs. They last 10 to 25 times longer than conventional ones and you can save up to $135 a year um, just by having Energy Star light bulbs so in your home. So it can make a difference. It can make a huge difference. That's a lot of money. What about LED bulbs? My husband's been telling me, oh, get mm -hmm. an LED. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. So LED is a, a relatively new technology, and it's just really advancing um, in terms of the quality of the light bulbs. So when you purchase an Energy Star certified LED, mm -hmm. you're getting the best technology on the market. What about big projects in the house in terms of maybe preparing for? 
One of the major projects that you can undertake are, uh, is changing out your heating and cooling system, your HVAC system. Oh, wow. And that's a pretty costly one, but as I said before, you know, half of your utility bill goes to heating and cooling your home, so you want to make sure that you have the most efficient system available um, in your home to you. So right. that's one, you want to look for an Energy Star system. And to look for some of these products, where would I go? They're everywhere. Okay. These products are everywhere. Um, all your home improvement stores, online, you can always find them. At the end of the day, a small act can really make a big difference. Yes. Thank you so much for all those tips. Thank you. And I'm going to save a little bit more every year just because of you. Yes. Thank you, Denise. And of course, if you'd like to save more, if you'd like to protect our climate, just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. You're going to find a link there to the Energy Star website. That's thebalancingact.com. Earth Day today on the Balancing Act, it's time to clear the air literally. Is the air you're breathing at home clean? You know, free from dust, dander, allergens, all those nasty, tiny, even microscopic things that aggravate allergies and can really affect you and your family's health. With us talking about bringing affordable air quality into your home is the host of today's homeowner television and radio shows, Danny Lifford. He's also a licensed home contractor who's been servicing homeowners for more than 30 years. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, Olga. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. I got to tell you, the reality is, you know, we have regular filtration at home sure. and sometimes even ventilation systems, mm -hmm. but sometimes, Danny, it's not enough, right? Well, most of the times it's not enough because there's so much in the house now. You know, for years, people like I have been telling people to really tighten the envelope of the home and make sure that you make it as energy efficient as possible. Well, millions of people have listened and now we've got a real problem with the air quality inside your home. And I'm going to be personal here because I'm always concerned about it. I have two girls yeah. and one of them is asthmatic. So oh I'm, boy. I'm yeah. always on top of that situation. Sure, sure. So I'm actually so glad you're <laughs> here today. So what should a homeowner to do to improve the indoor air Solution. Yeah. Well, make Situation, sure, I make sure that you really ventilate as much as you should. One area in the home is the kitchen. Another is the bath. Several other areas of the home that's a big concern. But when you have a, a range hood, you need to use it not only while you're preparing. Does it help? Because oh, I have oh, it. Help, it helps a lot. Uh, as long as it's a, a good quality one and is sized properly as far as the cubic feet per minute movement of air and so forth. That used to be a really loud. Nowadays, uh, Braun Newtons made them so much quieter, so much more efficient. It's easier <laughs> to use. And of course you should. In terms of the entire house, because this can help in the kitchen area, what do we do when it comes to just the bathrooms, the kitchen? Sure. Uh, well, well, the bathroom also, you know, having a good exhaust fan. And I'll tell you, uh, one of one just like this, matter of fact, I have this exact one in my shower, and it has a humidistat control in it. So you just leave the switch on, and when that humidity level gets up to a certain level, it's going to power on, it's going to exhaust it out very quietly so that you never have to worry about it. I'll tell you what, I've had my shower there for about a year. No mold, no mildew. It really works very well. Vacuum cleaner is really important. I love to vacuum my house. I have a, I have tile, so mm -hmm. I I always try to really keep it clean. But my my brother, who is a contractor, says right. you've got the wrong cleaner. Well, I'll tell you why. Because even the very advanced canister type vacuum cleaners that have the HIPAA filter, it sounds good, but you're bringing air and contaminants into that vacuum cleaner and it's blowing air back out. So you're only getting part of the problem taken care of. With a central vac, this blows everything all the way to the outside, and you wouldn't believe, Olga, how powerful this is. It's five times more powerful than any of the other ones out there. So you're getting it cleaner, and you're moving all of those allergens and pet dander and all of the mycelia and everything right outside instead of circulating it inside the home. So it's just a much, much better way to go. Now let me ask you, I do like ease of use, and I see this and I kind of think, oh my gosh, I'm so petite, but easy to use? Well, it's very easy, and that's another Another big advantage of it because the large unit sits out in your garage or out in your utility room. So if you have a two-story house, think about carrying that um, heavy canister vacuum cleaner upstairs, downstairs. No. This is all you're carrying here, you're and it has all these accessories. I'll tell you what, my girls. I have three girls, and occasionally they will vacuum their cars. They even hook it up to that, take it right outside. It does a fantastic job. And they vacuum their cars? Yeah, no, not very often. Can you have them call my girls, yes, please? <laughs> just every now and then when I make them feel guilty, they do that. There so. you go. So bottom line, you know, at the end of the day, really important thing people should keep in mind whether there's asthma in their house, nothing, you just 
keeping the air healthy. Well, absolutely, and it's not only moisture, that's very important, but you have chemicals in your home for cleaning and so forth. So, I mean, the ultimate way to go is a whole house ventilation system, and um, the systems are very small, they're very easy to have installed by a professional, and essentially, not only is it exhausting the air it needs to exhaust, it's also bringing fresh air in and balancing that so that it's not just all air going out, and it'll even, during cold weather, it'll even uh, heat that air coming back in, recovery unit, so that you're not wasting a lot of the energy. So ultimately, that's the way to go. These other areas of the home, if you don't have a good bath fin, or if you don't have a good range hood, vented all the way to the outside, not just in the attic. Good point. Then these are uh, good steps that you can take those baby steps before you head to the full house um, ventilation system. These are great tips. Anywhere our viewers can go to learn more? Well, absolutely. You can go to braun.com. That's B-R-O-A-N.com. A lot of information on everything we talked about, as well as just general good scent ventilation tips. I I promise you I'm going to have my girls call your girls about learning to clean the car. I know, I know. <laughs> Great. <laughs> nice to see you all. Thank here. you, sir. <laughs> Come back anytime. And if you'd like to learn more about making your home a safer, healthier place for you and your family, head to thebalancingact.com. It's always a breath of fresh air. Or log on to Facebook. Share with us your Earth Day-related tips at forward slash The Balancing Act fans. This is great. How about it? Morning. We welcome back Juliet Diorio Garcia from Acceptance Insurance for the fourth and final part of our conversation on you and your car insurance. So, do you really understand your policy? Exactly what are you covered for? And are there any limits? Well, Juliet is here to demystify it all. It's so nice to see you again. Thanks, Julie. It's great to be back. We all take our car insurance, I think, for granted or even see it as this necessary evil. Um, unfortunately, when something happens, most of us really don't understand our coverage. Can you just kind of give us a breakdown of what typically is covered in a policy? Sure. There are two basic types of coverage included in a policy. Liability. Think of liability as covering the other guy. Okay. And then comp and collision. And think of that as covering you. Simple. I got that. Of course, we all know one of the main reasons for car insurance is liability coverage. Could you just break down liability and how that affects our premium? Absolutely. So liability is comprised of two elements, bodily injury, causing injury to somebody else, mm -hmm. and property damage, damaging someone else's property. Think about this in terms of the other guy. So okay. if you cause an accident and you cause bodily injury, those numbers that you see in your policy that are, you know, maybe 30, 60, 30, and you've seen the slashes, the first two numbers are the bodily injury numbers, uh, and the third number is property damage. And those are the amounts that your insurer will cover. But then you can elect to increase those limits if you so choose. There's just a cost consideration. So essentially, minimum limits is just the baseline, and then you can add on to that? Yes. And they are required state to state everywhere, right? Everywhere, by law. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about comp and collision? What should we understand about them? Sure. So comp is short for comprehensive. And that covers things that are, think of them as an act of God. A hailstorm okay. damages your car. Collision is exactly what it sounds like. Covers your car from collisions, accidents. You know, understanding is great. But many of us have, like, teenagers in our household. We have seniors that may not totally understand their policy, how can we help them and what should we know about keeping those type of costs down? You've kind of hit on it already. Teens and seniors uh, can create um, a, a rate increase and mm -hmm. can experience uh, higher rates on their own because they simply are a, a higher risk profile in some cases. So what I recommend is it's always good to talk to an advisor, an insurance agent, um, or go, go online and, and get yourself some information about having those people in your household and, and how that could affect your own rate and whether or not you should exclude them from your policy. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have periods um, where they're financially strapped. What happens if you don't pay your bill on time? You know, it's such a great question, uh, and I'm glad you asked it. Uh, Think of insurance as a pay-as-you-go type of service. So while we never want to see people go without insurance, if you don't pay your bill, 
you have no coverage. That's how it works. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. oh, well, mm -hmm. that's really good to know. And as we discussed before, people are sometimes embarrassed about how much they don't know. And if viewers and our viewers are shopping for insurance, how can they find you at Acceptance? The best way to reach us is our website, which is acceptanceinsurance.com, and there you will find phone numbers to reach a live person, uh, as well as a wealth of information on the site itself. Good point, because some people really want to talk. They want to talk. They want to talk to a live person, so you yes, offer that as well. We do. Oh, that's so good to know. I mean, this is your last visit. I just want to thank everybody from Acceptance for really educating us on this process. It was so great to have you back in the studio. Julie, thank you. We really appreciated the opportunity to be here. Oh, great. All right, and if you'd like to know more about non-standard car insurance, go to thebalancingact.com and follow the links. We're also on Facebook and Twitter as well. We are so glad you spent part of your morning with us. And remember to do your part for the environment. It's never too late. Head to earthday.org for events in your area or ways you can make a difference, not just today, but every day. Every day is so important. And there's always lots more information on all of today's topics on our website, thebalancingact.com. I want you to check that out. And check out, of course, Facebook and Twitter. We are social. Follow us. <laughs> and thanks for joining us today. Remember to find your balance. So long, everybody.